Saint Stephen was the first martyr. What do we know about him, Stephen's crown of victory? Stephen's name means, crown. He was the first martyr, one who willingly died, as a penalty for defending the Catholic, or Universal Church. He was one of those chosen to bring peace to the quarreling Church. Stephen was one of the first seven deacons of the early Church. He knew the scriptures so well that his Jewish opponents could not disprove him. Around the world, the gospel has most often taken root in places prepared by the blood of martyrs. Before people can give their lives for the gospel, however, they must first live lives for the gospel. You can't profess faith unless you live the faith first. One way God trains his servants is to place them in insignificant positions. Their desire to serve Christ is translated into the reality of serving others. Stephen was an effective administrator and messenger before becoming a martyr. Stephen was one of the managers of food distribution in the early church. Long before violent persecution broke out against Christians, there was already social isolation. Jews who had accepted Jesus as the Messiah were usually cut off from their families and the temple. As a result, the believers depended on each other for support. Sharing of homes, food, and resources was both a practical and a necessary sign of the early church. Eventually, the number of believers made it necessary to organize the sharing. People were being overlooked. There were complaints. Those chosen to help manage were chosen for their integrity, wisdom, and sensitivity to God. Stephen, besides being a good administrator, was also a powerful speaker. When confronted in the temple by various antagonistic groups, Stephen's logic in responding was convincing. This is clear from the defense he made before the High Council. He presented a summary of the Jews' own history and made made powerful applications that stung his listeners. During his defense Stephen must have known he was speaking his own death sentence. Members of the council could not stand to have their evil motives exposed. They stoned him to death while he prayed for their forgiveness. His final words show how much like Jesus he had become in a short time. Chapter 7 verse 60, And he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. His death had a lasting impact on young Saul, later to be known as Saint Paul, of Tarsus, who would move from being a violent persecutor of Christians to being one of, one of the greatest champions of the gospel the Church has known. The lengthy speech Stephen made in his own defense is reported in Acts chapter 7 verses 2 through 53. Stephen summarized Old Testament teachings, showing how God had guided Israel toward a specific goal. He reviewed Israel's history in such a way that he replied to charges without actually denying anything. This amounted to a criticism of the Sanhedrin itself. Stephen denounced the council as stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears and accused them of resisting the Holy Spirit. Then he accused them of killing Christ, just as their ancestors had killed the prophets. He accused them, accused them of failing to keep their own law. Stephen was in the forefront of those who saw Christianity as much more than a Jewish sect. They took the commission of Jesus to carry the gospel to the whole world seriously. Saul slash Paul held the clothes of those who stoned Stephen. Stephen may well have been God's instrument used to conquer Paul who would become the greatest Christian missionary. Paul's mission to take the gospel to the whole Roman Empire in the first century. The Christians had to flee Jerusalem after Stephen's death while the apostles alone remained there. When they left they took Christianity with them and they too spread the faith as they traveled. Stephen's life is a continual to all Christians. Because he was the first to die for the faith, his sacrifice raises questions. How many risks do we take in being Jesus' followers? Would we be willing to die for him? Are we really willing to live for him?